of you and you define yourself are entrepreneurs. Well, we can to how you define that. Okay, how many of you someday would like to be entrepreneurs? This is very common. Okay, so for every one person who is an entrepreneur, there are like 20 who are sure that someday they will be entrepreneurs. Okay, I know that day really never comes, and there's a good reason for that. <laughs> Let's try to figure out what's going on here. So since I have the microphone and the, the label mic here and you don't, I want you to throw at me some characteristics of successful entrepreneurs. Like if you had to be successful, what characteristics should you bring to the table? Just shout them out. Diligence. Diligence. People management. Innovation persistence. Creativity. Leadership. Money. Communication. Risk taking. Hard work. I think I should just stop because the audience knows everything. So we could like throw out like more than 20 characteristics of successful entrepreneurs like that. And if I gave you another half an hour, you reach the number 100 for sure. Yeah, the question is not that. This not in preparation to the question. The question is, how many of you have all the characteristics that are listed? You see the problem that I'm trying to list? What has happened is because of the way media and the rest of the world has treated entrepreneurship, we have created this superman, or to be more politically correct, this super person. Super person doesn't sound as good. Okay, so let's say superman or superwoman, that probably is the way to be politically correct. There is no such person. You know, you can take a Donald Trump and a Richard Branson or some of these celebrity entrepreneurs. Uh, I could have said Vijay Mali as an Indian answer, but that is not <laughs> So you look at some of these celebrity entrepreneurs and maybe they have you know, such charisma that you look at them and say, you know, I could not be one of them. But the problem is, the, to begin with, these are not the required characteristics. Every one of these characteristics helps. But none of these are required. The only one if you ask me that is required, I'm sorry for giving you such a boring characteristic, but it's really only hard work. If you can do hard work and you're an introvert, you have poor communication skills, you can't speak English to begin with, you can still be an entrepreneur in entrepreneur in several spaces. You understand? But other than that, it requires nothing. But that sounds like really boring, right? As in, we want you to have a more sophisticated approach to entrepreneurship. So what happens is, one of the entrepreneurs, as well as young startup entrepreneurs, attend all of these programs, like a weekend here, and a workshop there, and a factory here. The word startup precedes them. Startup weekend, startup factory, startup bench, startup bench, right? <laughs> and they learn a lot of new words, such as customer pain point, traction, what problem are you solving? And then what happens is, whatever ordinary idea they had in their mind, they retrofit into all of this. So they go back and say, the problem I'm solving is this blah blah blah. You, you see the problem here? That really, it was not as if they took great concepts and implemented them, they do whatever they had implemented and started calling them great concepts. Right? So also one of the biggest thing I hear in every entrepreneurship session is, you know, identify a problem and solve it. <laughs> I think you know, this is the most obvious thing and try to get away with it. Okay, and now, it has been said so much that you know, I got tired and I said, you know, why don't we set up a startup which creates problems? I think we are like running out of problems with all, right? <laughs> See, I have been a silly entrepreneurial two stretches of six and a half years each, which is totally a coincidence. Uh, the first time I had a fabulous exit, the second time I made money but not really very much. I blame it on the global economic crisis because I do not want to accept blame. And not really. In fact, when I look at entrepreneurs, I think, so hard work is something they do, right? So what do I do looking at them? The only thing I want from them is that they accept. They accept the uh, re responsibility for everything that happens around them. Okay? See, an entrepreneur is not that daring risk taker. Now, it could be a risk taker, no doubt about it. But you know, the way we have popular media talking about risk and don't be scared of failure is almost as if, you know, when you all go bungee jumping, everybody is like, oh, should I do it or not? And after that, remove this, I'll jump without it. <laughs> right. So, let me put it this way. Um, if you have been an entrepreneur, you're going to be an entrepreneur, let me tell you this. The problems or the challenges you face are not really rational, they are all within you. The problems are all your insecurity, your loneliness, your inability to sustain interest, your inability to tell people that though you make absolutely no money today, someday you make a lot of money, etc. And the problems are inside of you. If you can deal with those problems that are inside of you, then I think you could be an entrepreneur. And frankly, 
I truly believe that every one of us has some entrepreneurial trait or ability. Whether it is enough for a student to come today, for example, a lot of us can cook, right? Maybe we can make an omelet. I don't know. So I don't know how far you can go. But that automatically doesn't mean you can be a chef, right? So, yeah, a few of us are laughing because we are the only ones. <laughs> so I think that you have to think of entrepreneurship as something which is to, 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 to begin as a hobby. Here, there are many motivations to be an entrepreneur. The only one I have not seen ending well, if the only... So you know, I said entrepreneurship is not solving a problem. And you say, you know, the problem I want to solve is that I don't have enough money compared to how much I would like to have. That is the problem I want to solve. Right? So I find that if you are solely motivated by money, and I think money is a great motivator, but there is no other motivation. You hate what you do, you are not passionate about things, you don't really want to help people out with whatever service slash product you are offering. I think that the gestation period will always be three times more than you thought it was, and you will not be able to sustain interest. Okay, I myself have been guilty of starting many ventures because I thought I found this great window of opportunity and it always fails. So, you know, only if you have motivation beyond money, money is not a problem. But if money is the only problem, I think you will probably not succeed. <coughs> so, I am basically here talk today talking about the three pillars of the entire startup ecosystem. I have talked about entrepreneurs and we need many more of you to talk about entrepreneurs. But I am going to start talking about the second pillar, which is People who support entrepreneurs, loosely defined, you could call them mentors. There are other words that don't mean exactly the same, but they could be coaches, counselors, consultants, blah blah. But I'm here to talk about mentors, and there's a slight variation between all these words, that's what we're into semantics. So, mentors are supposedly people who help entrepreneurs. Sometimes they do it because of the goodness of their heart, some other times they do it in exchange of being paid, probably paid money, or more commonly being paid by some equity, some ownership of the company. I have done all of those kinds of mentorships also. In fact, over the last four years, I have a full-time angel investor slash mentor. Right? <laughs> now, here's the problem. Sometime, sometime ago, I went to LinkedIn and in the search box, I typed entrepreneur. Okay? You see, how many entrepreneurs are there in the world who actually use that word in their profile somewhere? And the answer the number was 500 and something thousand, so close to half a million. And then I said, hey, that sounds like a very small number, that is what I thought was the number of entrepreneurs in the city of Mumbai. But then I realized it's LinkedIn. So then I went and I put in the word mentor. And there were 800,000 something. <laughs> you see a problem there? <laughs> Given that each mentor mentors like a few entrepreneurs, such as 5, 10, blah, blah, how could there be more? <laughs> it's like, you know, the world has... You know what I'm saying? So the world has like 1 million mothers, <laughs> but only 500,000 children. I said, what happened? <laughs> you mean, I said, I said, I said, I said mothers. Did you see the problem with that? So it is entirely lopsided, but when you meet these entrepreneurs, you will understand why. But you will not understand it the first time you meet them. Because one of the common characteristics of all, sorry, I didn't mean entrepreneurs, I mean mentors. One of the common characteristics of all of these mentors is that they speak very well. <laughs> right before the session started, I went to organizers. I said, "Can I use the word bullshit during my talk?" So they got into a little harder, and two of them said yes, and one of them said no. So I will not use the word bullshit in my talk. <laughs> what is? <laughs> but okay. See, uh, one part of the problem is that I am a mentor, right? So if I assume that mentor means guru. So you come to me and say, Sir, I could blah blah blah. What do you think? The real answer is, I have no idea. <laughs> right? But I'm the guru, right? How many times will I get away by saying that? So I say, I think you should blah. Okay? And something that sounds really good. Right? I personally think that having good mentors is crucial to your entrepreneurial journey. They may not be designated as mentors, but they would be mentoring you all. Don't be your dad doing it for all I care. But the problem is that when you go to these so-called gurus, so-called mentors, it puts on them a huge pressure to perform. And those of you who, well, uh, there is a limit to how far I can stretch this analogy, but performing under pressure is not always possible. <laughs> right? So, to one extent, I would say that please have limited expectations for mentors. And second, if you are going to be a mentor, Feel free to tell people, I don't know, I do that all the time, right? 
a case in point being the lecture that you're listening to right now, for instance. Okay? One of the consequences is that there are some slogans which sound like truths. One of those is, don't copy other businesses. Come up with an original idea. I think that that's very easily believable. But go back and look at the first seven Indian startups, by startups I mean companies that started in the last 10 years or so, which turned out to have a valuation of around a billion dollars. Right? Every one of them is a copy of something that happened in the rest. So on the one hand, we say don't copy, but you know what, I will continue to do so. Right? <laughs> so again, I, by the way, I still feel that don't copy is a pretty reasonable slogan, but it is only a slogan. You are an entrepreneur, listen to everybody, disagree with everybody, bring in what you have within you, take the bet, fail as a consequence, it's not so bad. Right? With that, I hope that some of you who are, you know those 90% those of these people in the class, in this room who raised their hand and said that I want to be an entrepreneur, I hope that you are going to be an entrepreneur someday and that they, they should be like today, this evening, by Monday, go and resign for whatever you're doing, unless if you're students, don't resign. Okay, I'm not... <laughs> That's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>